Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, also Dunun Institute of Biblical Research, our YouTube channel there. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of news that we're really wanting to get into, a lot of things that have been happening around the world. And uh, I've just really been held up by a lot of things that are on my heart. Uh, of course, other things that are holding me up as well, trying to get some of this information out to you. Uh, but hopefully by tomorrow I can start putting some of that information out, especially that of, uh, of Iran. What's going on in Iran? Why is there a media blackout? Um, well, we know the truth of why there is a blackout, because we do have uh, our source from Iran that will share that has shared that information with us. We'll be sharing that with you as well. But there's one thing that's just that's laid heavy on my heart now for several days. And uh, I just have not been able to put this together uh, until now. And even now, it's still it's not to the depth that I would like for it to be uh, to share with you. But I'm going to do my best to bring this out this evening. Not a very long message, uh, but, you know, as I often state to you guys, uh, I'll, I'll stay with the truth no matter what. And I know it may offend some, uh, and if it offends you, it's just going to offend, you know, but if you really believe in what we're doing and you want to stand with what we're doing to tell the truth, support the work we're doing. There's not many people going to tell you the truth. Same thing. Everything that's gone on with Trump, etc. Never afraid to tell you the truth. I knew it would cost friends. It would cost people to walk away, etc. But I will tell you the truth. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Because the thing is, the hour is late and we don't have time. We don't have time to play church. The days of playing church is long over. All right. And I think that this is a message that many people need to hear today. Even though it's a news broadcast we have here, we need to get this out. This, this is the greatest news that there is, is that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, rose from the dead. He is the Messiah. He is God manifested in a human body that, say, that came to save the world from their sins. That's the greatest news that still should be shouted from the roof, rooftops. All right. But anyway. If we look in uh, Matthew, or excuse me, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, starting with verse 35, says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. He doesn't know where he goes. All right? You know, Hold that in your mind there, because the Qumranite community considered the Pharisees of Jesus' days sons of darkness. The light came into the world, and he said to you, walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. That's a prophecy within itself. The Pharisees of 2,000 years ago, the sons of darkness, not all of them, mind you, not all of them. We had Paul. He was a Pharisee. Nicodemus came by night to try to find Jesus. There were many that believed, but you're going to find out why they didn't confess him in just a few moments. They'd be thrown out. All right? Now, the thing is, is he's prophesying to you here, lest darkness come upon you. See, walk while you have the light. Soon Christ is coming for his bride, and it's over. He will send his angels to bring a destruction on this earth like you never could imagine. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed, uh, and did hide himself from them. Oh, wow. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Uh, to me, it's a cyclical event. What we see 2,000 years ago is repeating today. Orthodox Jews of today will tell you that they are the descendants of the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago. Messianic teachers are telling you that you've got to go back under the teaching of the rabbis in Israel. Talmudic rabbis. 
They even like to quote the scripture of uh, Zechariah, is it Zechariah or Isaiah? Zechariah, I believe it is. 8, where it says that 10 men of the nations will take a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, we hear that God is with you, that we, we will go with you. Totally ignoring the fact that it is singular, Jewish man. God is with you, yes, Emmanuel. God is with us. That's exactly right. You know, some people get upset. They say, Steve, why do you got to yell? Well, turn the volume down. It's the only thing I can tell you. You know, I, the point is sometimes is to get a point across. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you, 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 maybe you um, live near a busy highway and you got small children. You know, do you sit there and, and just like, oh, come on now, honey, don't go play by the highway. You might get killed. Don't worry now. No, sometimes you got to raise your voice a little bit to get, a, get the attention and, and might even have to take a little bit stiffer means to make sure that child doesn't play in the street. Especially when they're too small to understand even the English language. Okay? Verse 37, But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Uh, this is happening even today. So many things people will testify of. In fact, the scripture says, they will say on that day, did we not do many mighty, mighty works in, in his name, in your name? And Jesus said, I'll say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never even knew you. There it is right there. Why doesn't he know them? Because they believe not. All right. Verse 38, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, uh, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they, are, they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and should, and should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. That's what's happening today. That's why you have like the Kufi organization. What is that, by John Hagee? Everything on their news articles. Today, a young generation will see the collapse. Pope Francis condemns anti-Semitism. Pharaoh Islands to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's uh, capital. Israel strikes Hamas after it fires two rockets. Uh, you know, and, 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 and you could just go online and look up all the organizations that are for, um, that, are, that are Christians that are standing. They say, we stand with Israel. That's the apple of God's eye. The apple of God's eye are those that believe the words of Jesus Christ. That's the apple of God's eye. The one, listen, you might say, oh, no, Brother Steve, that's wrong because it's Israel. Exactly, sure. I'm not talking about replacement theology. 2,000 years ago, there were a lot of Jews that believed Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. They weren't sons of darkness either, were they? Okay? And here we are today. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I think you should be witnessing to my Jewish brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something. If it wasn't for a little Baptist preacher in Alabama when I was eight years old, which I, I would have probably still come to Christ regardless, might have been a different minister, but if it wasn't for somebody with the gumption to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ, I wouldn't have never heard it. We didn't go to churches. You know, I, I come from a renegade family. When I say renegade, renegade Jews, they, they weren't religious or anything, so we didn't go to synagogues either. You know, it just gets me. It gets me because I see the people doing the exact same thing as what was done 2,000 years ago. You know, just like Jesus said. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. 
What happened when they took and they did the, uh, they dedicated the, the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem? Was the name of Jesus Christ spoken by a single pastor at that event? No. Why? You might offend the Pharisees. Just like they have on there, look what they here. What do they got? Pope Francis condemns anti-Semitism. Address from St. Peter's Square. You done a great thing? John Hagee said a prayer. Didn't dare say the name of Jesus Christ, though. You might offend the Pharisees. And if you do that, you might get put out of the synagogue. That might be the best thing for you. If we go to John also chapter 9. It says here, these words spake his parents. Okay, let me back up. It's about the, the young man that was born blind, right? But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that he had received his sight. And they asked him, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or, hath, or who hath opened his eyes, uh, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that, Jesus, that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Notice the verbiage there. That if any man did confess that he was Christ, the anointed, the Messiah. Have you noticed that even amongst the messianic groups there that they're saying now to you? All of Israel are, are anointed. The children of Israel are all anointed. We're all messiahs. That's a new doctrine spreading around. Oh, and it's just gobbling up in the messianic communities. Gobbling it up. Every bit of it. Let's go back again. John chapter 12, though. Look at that beautiful prophecy. While you have the light, believe, verse 36, in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things speak Jesus to... Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Verse 35. Then Jesus said unto them, yet, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not, knoweth not whether whether he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and hid him and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they, they believed not on him. Isaiah the prophet uh, might be fulfilled. So the, the saying that Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, and they should not see with their eyes and not understand with their heart and be converted, and I, and, and I should heal them. I, I tell you, friends, it's just, I, I'm, I'm troubled at the things that I'm hearing and seeing. Um, my phone's going off like crazy. It never stops. But he answered and said unto them, this is in Matthew chapter 15, and I bring this up because this is the whole point of it. There is such a major movement, like Yitzhak Shapiro, especially in South America. Now, in America, um, from what I've been hearing, because there is a sister that really watches closely everything that he puts out, he's toned down that message here in America. There's too many Americans here in the message that we're, we're sharing with people and they're waking up to what's going on. So he's trying to tone it down. So Shapira, though, fully believes that you should be back underneath Talmudic rabbis. But here's a good example of why not. Chapter 15, verse 3, But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Your Talmudic tradition. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whoever, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It be as a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, 
and honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of non-effect by your Talmudic traditions. What did Jesus say about their Talmudic traditions? You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. It's right here behind you, behind the camera right here, all the Mishnah and the Talmud and Aruch Shulchan and Zohar and everything else you can imagine. Uh, all this, all, the, all these books. These, those are the doctrines. Those are those right there, teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. That's the commandments of men, not of God. And he said, you draw, he said to the Pharisees, you draw nigh with your lips, but your heart's far from me. Why? Because you, all these books here try to justify every single law that's in the, in the, in the Bible. Or, or try to minimize it and justify that you can do something more. I was just, re I was just reading. In fact, right here. Got it right here. Um, this is actually the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin is the, is the, is the law courts, right? You want, you want to talk about a confusion. Here's one right here. They're, they're quoting right out of the scripture about thou shalt not take wait a, minute, a widow's raiment for pledge. That's one, right? But that's only to be implied if she's poor. Right? We may take a pledge of a rich widow, but not of a poor one. God simply said, thou shalt not take a widow's raiment to pledge. He didn't say whether or not if she's poor or wealthy. But by your own traditions, you make the word of God of not known effect to yourselves. Um, <laughs> Then he gets in, he shall not multiply wives to himself. Talking about a king. King's not to multiply wives to himself. But then you, you've got all these different ideas here. Whence do we deduce the number of 18? No, well, now they're saying you can have 18. Uh, let's see. I would then have known that the reason was that his heart turned not away. Why then state that his heart turned not away? To imply that he must not marry even a single one who may turn away his heart. Then how am I to explain he shall not multiply? As the meaning that he may not marry many, even though they be women like Abigail. Hence do we deduce the number 18 from the verse, And unto David were the sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Ammon. And it goes into this whole long list of junk. And, uh, and as it continues on, I mean, it just doesn't stop. Next thing you know, they're up to 48 wives. But, oh, it doesn't break the commandment, because why? The rabbis have written it in the Talmud. No wonder why Yeshua said these things. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's what you do. He said you're teaching the doctrines of of man, you're teaching doctrines of men as the commandment of Almighty God. That's exactly what Phariseeism does today. And, and let me say something to you. If rabbis want to do that, that's up to them. That's, that's their business. Right? But it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so when you get like Yitzhak Shapira telling you, the Talmud is not bad. It is, it is not evil. It is our treasure. Jesus just told you that they worship in vain. They worship Yahweh in vain because they teach doctrines, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let alone, if you go back to John's Gospel, See, Jesus said to them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, Christ, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. The Pharisees were called the sons of darkness. 
And they said, and Jesus already tells you, they didn't know where they go. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Walk while you have the light. He's letting you know. That's why I say it's a prophecy. See, walk while you have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in the darkness knoweth not whether he goes. He's already telling you the Pharisees don't know where they're going. Why then do these rabbis and these messianic leaders and, and people like um, Mark Biltz want to put you under Talmudic rabbis when Jesus said they don't even know where they're going? He goes so far as to say, I think it's right here. Um, not only, I don't think I have it marked over here yet. Let me just see. Uh, maybe over there, I'll, I'll get to it in a minute. But about the blind leading the blind, don't they both fall in the ditch? But anyway, so anyway, he says again over here, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess it, he was the Christ, that he's the anointed one, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his, said his parents, he's of age, ask him. See, people are afraid to tell you, what I'm telling you right now, people are afraid to tell you this. Why? You get thrown out of your church or your synagogue. You know, they're converting churches into synagogues anyway. That's supposed to be something more righteous. Really. Let's move on. So Jesus says here, you know, okay. We got that already. All right, verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth out of the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto them, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? What were they offended about? They were offended because he busted them on their Talmudic tradition. That, do you know that very tradition about not honoring your mother and your father is written in the Talmud? That is a Talmudic belief. And he said, your doctrine is a commandments of men. Right? He said, you were, he said, he quoted, he even said, Isaiah prophesied of you saying, this people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching doctrines of the commandments of men. And you mean to tell me you would go suck up underneath of a Talmudic rabbi and think that this is godly? Look, most Jewish people that end up recognizing that Yeshua is the Messiah, the first thing they're ready to do is to ditch this. Look at Nehemiah Gordon. And Nehemiah Gordon doesn't even claim to believe in Yeshua as the Messiah. But he had enough brains to realize this isn't the word of God. God bless this man. I pray that God will open his eyes the rest of the way. But he answered and said, every plant, well, this is the important part. Then came his disciples, verse 12, and said unto him, Knowest thou not the Pharisees were offended? They were offended. Oh, they, they were offended that you dare speak against the sages. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. So he lets you know they're blind. And yet... The teachers today want to put you back underneath Talmudic rabbis. I, I'm, I'm trying to make this sink deep, okay? That's the only reason, I, you know, it's on my heart. I want it to sink deep. You're, are you afraid that they're going to throw you out? Maybe you need to get thrown out. You know, we've been thinking about starting a worship service here in the Orlando area. I mean, I'm feeling it heavy on my heart. My wife's been feeling it heavy on her heart as well. To, to have a place where people that live in this area can come and fellowship together and we can teach and preach the Word of God. It won't be a 501c3. 
No, it won't be. But because we want to be able to speak the Word of God without any, any fear of man. So, uh, in, in fact, those of you that, that do live in this area here, uh, we are going to be doing this conference coming up in uh, February here again, same place we normally do it at. <clears throat> that, I'll get that posted before too long. Uh, John Moore will be coming down. He's doing a, a little trip uh, with a lot of his supporters, so he's going to be speaking as well. Myself, uh, Yano will be speaking. We're going to actually be speaking the gospel to ourselves on this conference there. Uh, John will be speaking about the things that are coming up, anticipated coming to this world. Uh, he's got some very interesting information, so I think that'll be an interesting um, uh, conference that we're going to have there. But anyway... Um, He said, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Remember what he said about the tares? Remember how I shared with you the other day about the tares? And the Hebrew Matthew clearly shows, clearly shows. Um, let me see something here. I want to, I made a note the other day, and I just want to see if I actually... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something that's part of what I wanted to share with you tonight. You know, this fake millennial reign that they're wanting to produce for you, I think I'm going to have to go into that separately. I, I will. I'll go into that separately. Let me give you a little bit of information, though. Oh, by the way, I, I mentioned it the other day. I mentioned to you, and maybe I should say this, share, I'll share a little bit of this, and maybe you kind of will get this. Remember when Jesus, I quoted Jesus, he, made, he gives the parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a woman that went and hid three measures of meal in the bread, then the whole lump became corrupted. Satan is that three measures. And of course, when he came down and the fallen angels and they corrupted humanity, this is where that lies at. And I say that, you'd have to do some research on your own. So I'm just going to kind of leave it at that for you. I don't want to really go into that too much, uh, to elaborate too deeply into that. But it has to be before the Garden of Eden, before the fall of Adam and Eve. And the reason I say that, because he said the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a woman that hid the three, uh, three measures of, uh, of leaven into the lump. And of course, we know that Satan and his angels were thrown out. Um, we know the fallen angels come down. There's a lot to it. But that's where it starts at. And I, and I don't think there's any place where he ever speaks about what that parable meant. So I think that's something just to share with you. I thought that was interesting. Anyway, I believe that they're going to try to fake a thousand-year millennial reign here. And the reason why I say I wanted to bring this out, there are several things that have been going on. Uh, as Israel is getting ready to become the, the capital of the New World Order, we're finding all kinds of things that are coming out. An Israeli company claims that they will have a cure for cancer in a year. Uh, now this article here says, don't believe them. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say don't believe them. They may very well have that. In fact, right here on this uh, here, we found the, ma uh, the magic frequency. This will revolutionize our future. Listen First, to this here. We look through the microscope to see if anything is happening. We watch for five minutes. Nothing happens. We try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. Because we believed there just had to be a better way. There had to be a better way. And we think we may have found it. I have here two identical tuning forks, both tuned to the note A, the note an orchestra tunes to. These forks are both made to vibrate 440 times per second. We say their frequency is 440 hertz. 
If I tap this fork, putting little pulses of energy into it, the second fork will also vibrate in sympathy. And if I silence this fork, we just may, may hear the other singing its tone. We say that I'm inducing a sym Now, he will show you as well, this guy right here, that's able to break glass with his voice. Listen to this. This very charming young man on the internet who shatters crystal glasses with his powerful voice. But if you watch him carefully, you'll see that first he taps the glass with his finger and listens. The glass sings its natural resonant pitch. Then he takes a deep breath and sings a loud, long note. He induces a resonant vibration in the crystal glass. The vibration grows larger and larger and larger until the glass is shattered. Maybe this is the way that uh, the children of Israel brought down the wall of Jericho. Because they gave out a loud shout. God may have known that the resonance in the wall itself would cause it to crumble. That's interesting, and I'll show you another reason why. This bridge right here, also, he talks about falls from wind and a resonance. Just listen, though. It's important. Buses are going over it every day. And unfortunately, where they built this bridge, there was a steady wind blowing across it. And one day, this wind induces a small vibration in the bridge, hardly noticeable. But the frequency of the vibration matches the resonant frequency of some part of the bridge. And the vibration gets larger and larger and larger until the bridge collapses into the river below. A destructive... Now, the whole purpose that I wanted to share this video with you for is that in doing all these frequencies, they finally figured out which frequency would destroy leukemia. All right. So when Israel says that they're going to have the cure for cancer, they may be right. Here it is right here. Listen to this. The 11th harmonic. When we add the 11th harmonic, we begin to shatter microorganisms like a crystal glass. These are the first videos taken. We showed these videos to our friends in the biology department. They said they hadn't seen anything quite like it. Seems to be a new phenomenon. These organisms are being shattered by our electronic signals. We now know that cancer is vulnerable between the frequencies of 100,000 hertz and 300,000 hertz. So now we attack leukemia cells. Leukemia cell number one tries to grow a copy of itself, but the new cell is shattered into dozens of fragments and scattered across the slide. Leukemia cell number two then hyperinflates and all. Now he actually shows those things happening. I'll share the link to this video in this, in this video here for, with you. Why am I bringing this out? Uh, there's another thing that came up a, a little while back. It's been many years ago now. There was a man in Arizona that had discovered uh, some type of nanoparticle gold that was just literally out in his field. It was a, a nuisance for him. Well, they discovered that if you took that nano gold, it would give a longevity. It also created some very interesting aspects in the human life. Well, one day he and the, all the material that was on his property disappears. Next thing we find out, he's out in the Far East, I think like the Philippines, and they're doing research. They're finding out that you can nearly survive without even eating by using this nanoparticle gold. What am I bringing this all out for? This is exactly, I'm not, now I'm not against curing cancer, natural ways, things like that. I'm not against any of those things. If it helps you live a little bit longer, if there's something that's natural that can help you, I am 100% for those types of things. But what I do see also, there are certain powerful entities in the world today. They would call it a conspiracy if I were to say names 
to you, so I won't call names, but they gobble up all the research. They, they make sure that nothing ever goes to market. Nothing that truly helps you or gives you longevity will ever go to market. Why? They're saving it for their New World Order plan. Because part of their New World Order plan is going to give you the tree of knowledge. Like it was with Adam and Eve. They ate from the tree of knowledge. That's where they got their longevity as well. But see, their longevity was limited to not more than a day, a thousand years on earth. They had eternal life when they had when they were given the Chaim from the tree of life, they had eternal life, but they forsook eternal life for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's exactly what Satan, the sons of darkness, are going to bring you in this day. They're going to bring a serpent Messiah. They already said they were going to do it. They're getting all the technology and they're going to offer you from that tree of, tree of knowledge of good and evil. They're going to promise you to eradicate cancer. Why don't they just give it to you? See, it'll come with strings attached. See, just like Satan tried to do with Yeshua when he had him out there in the wilderness journey there, and, or excuse me, in the 40 days when he was out there being tempted in the desert. He said, if you'll worship me, I'll, all these kingdoms, I'll give them unto you. Jesus knew they had to be purchased with his own blood. Because the, in his blood was that life, was that chayim. And the only way that life could come back upon us and redeem us from the falling state where, that we were in was for him to willingly give his life. And even though I would appreciate the technology and being able to use it to help people that are sick, you will find everything like this will not be freely given out. It will come at a cost. A New World Order cost. A fake millennial reign cost. They might be able to put the microchip in you and uh, make those nanoparticles work in you. They can either make you live longer or take your life. And that's why I come back and say to you, as Jesus said, nevertheless among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. People are afraid when they build the third temple, they're afraid that, well, Jesus may be coming to that third temple. No, you should know the Antichrist is coming to that temple. But fearing that you might be put out or you might not get to be a part of it. You might not to get to live to get to be a thousand years old on this earth. I don't want the tree of knowledge. I only want Christ and Him alone. Listen, stand with us, won't you? Support the work. Support what truth really is. I know the millions and billions have been given to all these pastors that stand with the Pharisees. And, and listen, I, I can't encourage you enough. Try to win every Orthodox brother or sister you can to Christ. Because among the Pharisees, there are Pauls out there. There is a Nicodemus out there. And maybe this time that Nicodemus will be willing after you, you know, because Paul went there to, to say that he would not offend, he went there privately, those of reputation, to try to win them to Christ. So I encourage you to win them to Christ. Do everything you can for our Jewish brothers and sisters, especially those that are not caught up into this Orthodox system. Maybe, by God's grace, this is the hour to try to win them to Christ. Help us in what we're doing. Support the work here. And those of you that, that actually live here locally, write us on IsraeliNewsLive at gmail.com. Let us know you'd be interested. Give me, give me your contact information. I, I can't say I'm going to write to you right away. Uh, we're just we're praying about this, looking for a facility. 
we are actively starting to look because we feel the hour is late and we want to make this another part of the ministry here to be an outreach and to help the community that is here um, and for a place of fellowship as well. So anyway, I'm going to be doing a lot more teachings here in the near future, but I will in the morning. Pray for me in the morning. I need to catch you up on what's going on. The situation with Iran, Lebanon, the situation with um, uh, with Israel, these rockets that have been still, still to this day, still they're coming in. Um, it, it's been tit for tat, back and forth, back and forth. And I, and I feel for my Jewish brothers and sisters as well. I feel for the Palestinians, those that are being killed over there in Gaza. You know, many innocent people lose their lives. A little, the other day, Israel trying to retaliate, trying to take out what they consider to be these terrorist cells. You know, they killed an entire family and left one little baby. The only, the only one that survived the blast was a little baby about, I don't know, eight months old or something like maybe younger than that, four or five months old. Only one that survived out of the entire family will never know its mother, never know its father or anything. It's terrible, you know? And, and I don't want to see Israelis come under this either. Why? Because I want the, my Jewish brothers and sisters to know Jesus Christ. This has always been my greatest desire, is that I could get them to recognize that Yeshua is the Messiah. You know, I need to, we need to hold a conference for Orthodox Jews to come to. I really need to put together a conference like that and open with them, share with them the information. By the way, too, we're going to be, there's another conference we'll be going to next year as well uh, in 2020. I'll be giving you more details about that in, in the near future. Um, so, well, I'll, I'll update you as I can there. So, anyway, and Yana's going to be posting on Patreon, our Patreon channel as well, fixing to post the letters she's doing. I still have not got caught up all these uh, uh, addresses that we had. We got messed up in our computer system, but I'm getting close. Uh, and I know Yana's been doing some handwriting of people and stuff like that, but we want to get these letters out to you guys, the ones that are secretive. Uh, so.